Hello, I'm Jerry Svell. Welcome to our broadcast today. Thank you for joining with me. I appreciate you watching. I trust, praise God, that what you hear today is going to inspire your faith and encourage you to just stick it out no matter what you're going through because God is faithful who has promised. Today we're continuing our study on don't let go of your faith. Don't let go of your faith. Say that with me. I refuse to let go of my faith. Say it again. I refuse to let go of my faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36, Cast not away therefore your confidence. Another word for confidence is faith. Don't cast away your faith, which hath great recompense of reward. Notice, if you will hold fast to your faith, you will be rewarded for it. God is faithful. God says that He will reward those who diligently seek Him. So there's a reward coming your way if you refuse to let go of your faith. He goes on to say, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now, I want to read it again from the message translation. It says, You need to stick it out. Now, that sounds like to a lot of people, Oh, brother, here we go again. I'm going to have to stand my ground. I tell you, the last time I stood my ground, it almost killed me. No, that shouldn't be your attitude about faith. In fact, it should be a joy to believe God, to, to watch God do the impossible. You know, that's the way I feel about it. God has been doing impossible things in my life for 48 years. And when I have to use my faith, I don't consider it a chore. I consider it a privilege because I know that it is impossible for God to lie. He will not break His promise. He will not break covenant. And I'm about to have another testimony, praise God. So consider it a joy to trust God. Consider it an honor to believe God and to take Him at His word. So once again, it says, you need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. Notice every promise has a completion. If you will stand on the promise, then it will be fulfilled. Now, it may not happen overnight. It may not happen in a day or two. It may not happen in a week. It may not happen in a month. But who cares how long it takes just as long as it comes to pass? You know, I tell this testimony, and some people kind of cringe when, I, when they hear it, but I have stood on the Word of God for as long as 20 years before something I was believing for came to pass. That's right, 20 years. Now, not every faith project has taken 20 years. I've had faith projects that the moment I said, Amen, and opened my eyes, praise God, the manifestation took place. But that's not always the case. Most of the time, like the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, having done all to stand, stand therefore. It has been uh, my practice, so to speak, that I stand. And having done all to stand, I stand. And when I feel like quitting, I keep standing. When it looks like nothing's working, I keep standing. When everybody else tells me that I'm a fool for standing, I keep standing. You know, having done all to stand, stand, simply means there's no room for compromise. There's no room for giving up, no place for quitting. So you just stand, having done all to stand, and you keep standing until the promised completion comes to pass. Now, once again, then the King James, it says in verse 36, for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. What is patience? You know, a lot of people have a negative attitude about patience. They think, well, just hold out, and one of these days when you get to heaven, it'll be worth it all. No, that's not what patience means. Now, let me give you a Bible definition of patience. Patience simply means never changing regardless of the circumstances. Never changing regardless of the circumstances. Patience means being constant. It means that you're willing to persevere regardless of how long it takes. That's what patience means. It also means to stay put even when you feel like giving up. That's what patience means. It also means having done all to stand. Stand. That's what patience means. Uh, in the little Greek, it means to remain 
are to abide. In the Vine's expository, uh, expository dictionary of Old and New Testament words, the word patience is defined as to bear up courageously. So in other words, it just simply means you refuse to quit. You refuse to give up. You say, no, Brother Jerry, I don't know whether I can do that or not. Well, if I can do it, you can. Because you're looking at a man that once in his life, uh, a long time ago, he was a quitter. I didn't know any better. You know, I just thought, well, if it's too hard and it looks like it's not working, quit. But once I got into the Word of God, I found out about how to live by faith, how to take God at His Word, how to continue to trust God even when it looks like nothing's working. And I made up my mind way back there 48 years ago that quitting is no longer an option. I am not a quitter. I'm a winner, praise God. And so the Bible says you have need of patience. That means be willing to stick it out. Don't throw in the towel, so to speak, so quickly. Stay in faith. Dare to trust God and to trust His Word. Why? Because it is impossible for God to lie. You know, the Apostle Paul, one of my favorite men of faith, a hero of faith, when he was in prison facing death. Now, you have to understand, he's writing a letter to the Philippian church from prison, facing death. And he writes and says these words, count it all joy and be joyful. And, and he uses the word joy and rejoicing over and over and over in that letter. In fact, most theologians refer to it as the joy letter or the rejoicing letter. And let's remember now, he was in prison facing death at the time that he wrote this letter. Now, how many people do you know when they're facing death would write a joyful letter and encourage other people to have the same kind of joy that he had? Not many. But Paul was the rare breed, praise God. And he's a great man of faith. And so he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Notice the word always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That would include when things are not going well. Rejoice. When things look like uh, they're going in reverse. Rejoice. When it looks like nothing's working. Rejoice. When everybody's telling you you're a fool to keep believing God. Rejoice. Just keep rejoicing. That's an act of faith. That, that's, that tells the devil that you are not moved by what he's doing or what he's saying or any of the circumstances that he's creating in your life. You just keep rejoicing. You just stay in faith. Now, the Apostle Paul, even while he was facing death, he wrote this, these words to the church in Philippi in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. I know this shall turn to my salvation or deliverance. Now, notice how he is so positive, even when he's in prison, facing death, those guards are coming to him every day saying, Paul, we're going to kill you if you don't denounce Christ. But he would not do that. He would rather die than denounce Christ. But he knew that he was not going to die. In fact, he said, I am going to continue to live because I want to come out of this prison and I want to teach you the joy of believing. Read it, Philippians chapter 1. He said, the joy of faith. Another translation says, the joy in believing. So the Apostle Paul counted it a great joy to trust God. He counted it a great joy to stand on His Word. And that's what you and I can get to that place in our lives if we'll dare determine that quitting is no longer an option. You know, you have everything to, to look forward to. You have everything to win, nothing to lose if you will just continue to stay in faith. How valuable is your healing to you? How valuable is a financial breakthrough to you? Are you willing to stand for it? Are you willing to wait for it? God is a promise keeper. He's the original promise keeper, and He will not break covenant, and He will not break His promise to you. So, once again, He says, you need to stick it out so that you will be there for the promised completion. Now, once again, the Bible says that there is a great recompense of reward. Another translation, I believe it's the New International Version, says you will be richly rewarded. Doesn't that sound good to you? 
I like to know that as I'm believing God, I'm standing in faith, believing for impossible things to happen, that I have this promise that I can hold fast to, that I will be richly rewarded. See, that, that inspires my faith. That inspires me to just keep standing. That inspires me to refuse to even consider the thought of quitting. So I will be richly rewarded. That's worth it all. Can you say amen? Now, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus made this statement, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, the message translation says, and never quit. The modern English version says, never lose heart. And the Amplified says, never give up. So notice here, the implication is that we do not give up. Once we begin to release our faith, we do not give up. We do not lose heart. We do not quit. In other words, quitting is no longer an option. Stay in faith. Don't let go of your faith. Don't cast away your faith. Unwavering faith always pays rich dividends. Remember that. Unwavering faith always pays rich dividends. Psalm 31, verse 23 and 24. Love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. The message translation says, Love God, all ye saints. God takes care of all those who stay close to Him. Be brave, be strong, don't give up. You know, it's amazing how many times in the Scriptures you'll find the phrase, don't give up. If you don't see it in the King James exactly in that wording, you'll find it in the Amplified or the Message or one of the other translations. Throughout the Bible, it's telling us, be brave, be strong, don't give up. Brave means courageous. It means fearless. It means without being moved. Psalm 112, verse 7 and 8 says, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. The word established means set, firmly fixed, and founded. Notice this man does not let go of his faith. His heart is fixed. His heart is established. Acts chapter 20, verse 24 one of my favorite verses, the Apostle Paul said about all the adversity that came his way and all the adversity that would be in his future. His attitude was, but none of these things move me. None of these things move me. In other words, he refused to let go of his faith. The message translation says, the Holy Spirit has let me know repeatedly and clearly that there are hard times ahead. This is what Paul is saying in Acts chapter 20. Notice the Holy Spirit had already told him in advance that hard times are ahead. But that matters little. What matters most to me is to finish what God started. So notice the Apostle Paul had this no-quit attitude. He was not willing to cast away his faith. He held fast to his faith, and God rewarded him over and over again. Think about it. Is this your attitude today? Do you have that same attitude that none of these things move me? If not, develop that attitude. You can do it, but it's going to take being in the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Once again, if you had known me, you know, B.C., before Christ, I was a quitter. But once I got into the Word of God and found out what God had promised, that I made up my mind that my quitting days were over. Quitting is no longer an option. And praise God, as a result of it, I like to say, just like the Apostle Paul, no matter what comes my way, none of these things move me. I'm going to stay in faith, and I'm going to experience the promise completion, just like the Bible says. So, are you determined to see God reward you? Are you determined to see God pay big dividends for staying in faith? Are you determined to win and not lose. If you are, then I believe, praise God, you're going to receive and experience some of the greatest breakthroughs you've ever experienced in your life. This is not the time to give up, folks. This is the time to determine that you're going to stay in faith and you refuse to give up. 
I like knowing that no word from God will fail to come to pass. The Bible says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God shall stand forever. And that's what I built my life on, the Word of God. And you can do the same thing, and I promise you, God will not let you down. I want to read from Hebrews 10 and verse 39. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back. Notice what it says. We're not of them who draw back. Or in other words, we don't quit. The message translation says, we are not quitters who lose out. Oh no, we'll stay with it and survive trusting all the way. That's what you need to decide today, that you are not a quitter. You're not a quitter who loses out. You're going to be one of those who stick with it, stay with it, stay in faith. Don't cast away your faith. Determine that your days of quitting are over. They're no longer a part of your life, praise God. And then he says, if you will continue to trust God, you will be greatly rewarded. Doesn't that sound good to you? Greatly rewarded. So I want to encourage you today, stay in faith. Whatever you're believing God for right now, no matter how impossible it might seem, I've faced impossible looking situation for the last 48 years, over and over and over again. But I have this testimony. God has never let me down, and He's not going to let you down. So just stay in faith. Don't be so quick to give up. God has a reward waiting for you on the other side of your faith. Don't ever forget that. God is faithful. The Bible says the faithful, and that's what you need to become, one of those faithful ones, the faithful will abound in blessings. Doesn't that sound like a good plan to you? God wants you to abound in blessings. All the blessings of God that are waiting for you, they're on the other side of your faith. So don't cast away your faith. Now, I want to close it with this, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to, the, to, to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. If you feel like giving up, if you feel like quitting, run to the Word. Don't run away from the Word. Run to the Word. Get in the Word. If you feel like that nothing's happening and you just can't stand anymore, then run to the Word of God. Once again, I commend you, brethren, to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. The Word of God will build you up. It'll make you strong. It'll enable you to continue to stand. It'll enable you to, having done all to stand, you will just continue standing. And thank God, as a result of it, you will experience the promise completion. Every promise that God has given has a promised completion. That's what God wants you to enjoy. So let me encourage you once again, stay in faith. Don't give up. Praise God. Your victory is at hand. Watch this announcement, then I'll be back in just a few moments. When tough times come, what do you do? Complain? Quit? Head home? Most people give up, but God wants you to stay in the battle and prevail. It's time to let the champion in you arise. In the powerful book, Called to Battle, Destined to Win, Jerry Savelle shares enthralling stories, solid teaching, and inspired motivation from 40 years of ministry experience. God is looking for a group of winners to rise up and show the world that he is far greater than the images and stereotypes portrayed in modern culture. Learn how to persevere when situations are tough and how to stand on the Word of God until victory is achieved. God has chosen you and has given you a destiny to experience His breakthrough power. In the classic, hilarious, and must-see DVD, When You've Done All to Stand, Stand. Jerry Savelle encourages you to take an aggressive attack against the devil and get back everything he has stolen from you. If you've been standing and believing God for quite some time, if your shield is full of darts and your helmet of salvation leaning to the side, keep standing. Don't wait any longer. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Don't Quit package, including the powerful book, Called to Battle, Destined to Win, and the must-see DVD, When You've Done All to Stand, Stand. Any pain or disappointment in your past cannot overcome God's purpose for your life. He will always show up when you refuse to back down. Say no to giving up and yes to becoming a champion today.
My name's Trey Johnson. This is my partner story. I grew up in Andrews, Texas, in a great family, but as I got into high school and college, I started hanging out with the wrong people. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character, and so I started making wrong decisions, and just a little while into junior college, I ended up quitting college, and I moved to another town living with this girl, and I went home one weekend, and I never will forget it, because as I was getting ready to go, my dad came out the back door, had tears running down his face, and he says, Trey, the Lord show me that you're gonna die if you don't get your life right with the Lord. And I just thought he was just being a normal parent. I was like, yeah, right, Dad, whatever, and went on about my business. And sure enough, two weeks later, I was going from one rodeo to another rodeo in the middle of the night, and the guy that I was roping with was asleep in the passenger seat, and the girl that I was dating at the time was asleep in the back seat. And I ended up going to sleep while I was driving and I woke up and I was running 70 down a four lane highway and I was in the median. And when I woke up, I tried to get the rig back onto the highway, but I saw that I wasn't gonna make it. So I pulled it back in the middle cause there was a big water culvert in the middle and I straddled it perfect with the truck and the truck jumped it, but the trailer hit it right on. And of course, when the trailer hit it, it separated the truck and trailer and spun us across the highway and the trailer just went end over end over end. Once we came to a halt over here and I saw everybody was okay, I took off running for the trailer and I crawled in the top of the horses because we were waiting for the jaws of life to get them out and they're kicking and they're pawing and there's blood everywhere and I get down there and I'm petting them and I remember my dad. I knew that God had spared my life that night and so in that horse trailer with blood everywhere and by the way, the horses did end up being okay, but in that moment, I called upon the name of the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, I, I want to know that you're real. I want to know your presence. I want to know your power. And from that day forward, I've been a man after the heart of God and I'm the same way today. When you stay hungry, God will open up doors. When you stay hungry, God will bring freedom into your life. I discovered Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. And I began to just simply put him first. And as I put him first, he began to open up opportunities. He began to bring freedom from this addiction and that addiction. And somehow I got a hold of Dr. Savell's partner letter. And at the time I was kind of secluded. I didn't have a church. I didn't know the importance of a church, but I started memorizing his partner letters and started applying his, the word that came from him in my life. And I just, as I gave my attention to it, a desire began to build, to know God, to be my best, to discover my gifts and abilities and passions. And I began to discover that God was a good God and He wanted good things for me, which led me to where I am today, going all over the world, doing leadership conferences, personal development, roping schools, roping clinics, competing at the highest level, simply because a man was willing to do what God had called him and created him to do. It empowered me to be who God has called and created me to be. So I want to encourage you, if you'll stay hungry, no matter where you're at or what you're going through, God will begin to move heaven and earth to reveal His heart and His plan and His will for you. So don't you back off from being hungry and keep growing, keep going. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that a wonderful testimony? Trey is being used by God to help people all over the world, teaching them how to stand on the Word of God and believe God for the breakthrough that they need in their lives. So thank you, Trey, for that testimony. And here's a few others that uh, have been received uh, from viewers just like you. Uh, this is from Betty. My husband and I had always wanted to go to Hawaii, but we knew we would never be able to afford to. We believe what God promised, that the faithful shall flourish, and it shall be like days of heaven on earth. For our 50th wedding anniversary, our nephew and his wife blessed us with all expense paid, week-long trip to Hawaii. Praise the Lord. Well, Betty, I go there quite often, and I, I hope you enjoyed my island. Praise God. Marcia writes, My daughters and I attended a meeting with Dr. Savell, and during the meeting he talked about faith for flourishing. I decided to get back on my faith for a new phone, an iPhone 7. The day after Dr. Savell's meeting, I was blessed with enough cash to buy the phone I was believing for. I was also blessed with a dining room table. God is so good. We appreciate you sharing that, Marcia, and I rejoice with you. And here's one from Shanna. This is an awesome testimony. About six months ago, I was praying and the Holy Spirit dropped the name Jerry Savell in my heart and had me to look you up online. 
After listening to a message called Get Ready for the Blessing Explosion, we were so encouraged that my husband and I became partners. Thank you, Shanna. I appreciate that. We started confessing the scriptures you shared, and my husband received an unexpected $27,000 bonus at work. God is so faithful. Well, brother, you had sister, uh, well, Shanna and your husband, brother and sister, you certainly did have a blessing explosion, and I rejoice with you. Listen, send in your testimony, because as we share them, it inspires people to dare to believe God and refuse to give up. Don't forget our special offer once again, DVD, When You've Done All to Stand, Stand. This is hilarious. I tell you, you will not be able to stop watching this. Uh, a friend of mine who's a costume designer designed a, uh, a battle outfit uh, armor that I was standing in when I preached this, and I'm telling you, it was so amazing. When Brother Copeland saw me come out on stage in this armor, he said, what are you up to now? I said, I'm endeavoring to make a point. You're going to enjoy this right along with the book, Called to Battle, Destined to Win. Order them today, and we'll send them to you by return mail. Don't forget to log on to our website. And remember, next week we're going to begin a brand new series of broadcasts. And what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you the messages that I preached at the 2017 Southwest Believers Convention. Powerful, anointed, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss them. So I'll see you next week. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.